Thank you so much. Um, uh, the, the preferred modern sociological theories of agency and whether misguided or misconceived notion of abnegation of agency and allowing, uh, allowing the, uh, the boat to take whatever it is taking. If you ask me just to bluntly compare these two, I would, I would prefer the second one. Why? Is uh, uh, sometimes if you have a mad king and who takes the entire nation in, hurls down to chaos, sometimes not have any king is way better than to have a mad king. So the idea is, I'm going back to agency that uh, when people assume, like we have these graduates uh, from college and uh, who have absolutely no self-reflection, who have some degrees, who have been smart, we have prepared them to be really intelligent and uh, who have not spent any time in contemplating upon uh, self-negation. There have been only instruction from their childhood all the way to educational life of self-affirmation. They are right, the rest of the world is wrong. They have the correct worldview. They even have God's mandate with them. They have this thing as an obligation to impose their ideas upon the others, whether these ideas are given by the church or the modern day churches that we call the universities where all the lies are breed. And, and these our students, including us, who are perpetuating lies on top of lies, creating agents who are causing so much of trouble, havoc actually in the world. Most of the third world problems would be solved if the delusional people from the first world would stop going and teaching people what they need to do. So that is my first reaction. But the second reaction is not that the Bhagavad Gita actually wants you to abnegate your agency. There are two agents in Arjuna and there are two agents in Krishna. Bhagavad Gita is balancing between two different agents in these two dialoguing subjects. The first agent in the Bhagavad Gita is the everyday agent of the modern world, like everyday American you can uh, encounter. That is vengeful, pitiful, who has this deep-seated pain of the abuse that he endured or of the pain he wants to inflict upon his enemies. Arjun had every reason to be mad at Kauravas. He lost his kingdom. His wife was abused and they tried to kill him even though they were hiding here and there. Every single reason to be vengeful. But that doesn't mean that you have to live a life of vengeance. Arjuna in the battlefield is a vengeful, pitiful man. He had to lose the battle. If he had to win the war. And Krishna knew that Arjuna who was standing there was a brave warrior, but not as great as he could be because he didn't have to fight out of vengeance. And that, what happens to these vengeful people is because they are all at the end self-centered. They can't launch any big missions. They collapse, Arjuna collapsed. That type of agency that is guided by misconception has to collapse. And that is because that is when you need a teacher for the emergence of a higher agency or otherwise you will have another misguided agency uh, uh, just go to the cave then that is another misguided agency fight is one misguided agency running away from the fight is another misguided agency and there are just two options that's what people see no in the physical plane there may be two options but in the absolute sense we have beyond these two options of by embracing what type of agent i am now Krishna says, Kartum netsasi yan mohat karishyasi hava shopitat. You say you are not going to do it, you will do it, you know, because it's in your nature. Again, Sobhava. 
that you cannot fight against your internal inherent nature. And that internal nature, coming back to previous question, is not something completely manufactured by uh, these corporate capitalism and liberal whatever politics or anything. You have care, empathy, love, that what constitutes as a human being, your inner nature that gives you the truth, that gives you nonviolence. And Arjuna is standing there because he's just throwing arrows. He's not trying to murder anybody. Before he was, he wanted to count on the heads of the people that he would stack in front of the feet of Draupadi. But this Arjuna is a dead Arjuna in that sense. What about Krishna's agency? Krishna was never deluded like Arjuna, but Krishna could never reveal his higher agency either because his higher agency is acting in this all manifold. All the agencies, all the gods means all the agencies are his own singular agency embraced within him. It's a paradoxical agency. It's, it's chaos. It's a real society where there's good, there's bad. There's some people killing, some people giving birth to things. That is a Vishwa Rupa, the glorious, you know, universal form, cosmic form of Lord Vishnu, Krishna. That is one agency of Krishna in which paradoxical things are happening at the same time. There's another linear construction of Krishna in the form that he's a chariot driver. Is it's a humble down bottom rock, a servant is the God, the God is the servant. So our agency in modern sociology is not guided by these fourfold agencies. I beg you to start a new sociology to confront agency, the philosophy of agency on the foundation of fourfold agencies of the master and the slave. You can deconstruct Marx and Hegel right on that basis in which both are negated, but not in the abnegating battle of mutual annihilation. That is what modern uh, social theories are about, you know, because my, you are take, occupying my space, I have to take it for that, I have to deny your space or, you know, this, this is, this is the uh, 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 agency guided by uh, a mutual confrontation. Ours is the agency guided by mutual acknowledgement and a little bit of abnegation is there but not an absolute abnegation. We negate the lower being so that we can discover the higher being. Thank you.